Hey, Dark Horse Rowing Crew. We're back and we are talking about damper setting this week and giving you a workout that is going to help you find, hopefully, your ideal drag factor to be working at. Now, uh, here's the deal. We talk about damper setting drag factor. If you're still unsure about the difference between damper and drag, I'm not going to revisit that today. Go back and watch our damper setting and drag factor videos where we lay that out super clear for you. Today is about giving you one of our more in-depth workouts to helping you find an ideal drag factor. Okay, so bear with me. We're going to walk through this thing and it is going to teach you how you can implement this to learn more about the way that you interact with the machine. This is not meant to prove you right, wrong, prove me right or wrong, or prove any theories right or wrong. It is simply to help you gain exposure to different drag vectors in damper settings and learn from the way that you perform while interacting with them. Okay? Now, also know that human um, interaction with this workout does impact the results that you will get, meaning fatigue can play a factor into this. So keep that in mind. It's not a perfect workout, but there is no perfect workout. This, however, is a great one to get you started. So this workout is a damper and drag factor deciding workout to help you figure out where you work best. How does this thing work? Here we go. You are going to run five sets of six rounds of 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. If you do the math, that's three minutes. Okay, this is a typical Tabata interval, 20 on, 10 off. You are going to do this six times, so that's three minutes, meaning you will do five rounds of three minutes. Now, inside of these six rounds, you are going to have very specific prescriptions for what you're going to do. Each time in round one, for your first 20 seconds, you are going to row at your body weight in watts. Now that is your body weight in pounds, not kilos. Sorry for everywhere else in the world that uses kilos and not pounds. You're gonna use your body weight in watts in pounds. That is round one. That will be surprisingly easy. Okay, if you've been following along with Dark Horse for a while, you'll find that holding your body weight in watts is actually pretty accomplishable and should not be that fatiguing. So let's just run an example here. Let's say that I weigh 150 pounds. I don't, but let's just use 200 because that's actually closer to what I weigh. So let's imagine that I weigh 200 pounds. That means that in round one, I'm going to hold 200 watts. My attempt is to hold 200 watts consistently for the entire 20 seconds. Okay? Now, you should set this up in your monitor as an interval workout. 20 seconds of work time, 10 seconds of rest time, so that it will keep repeating. Okay? Now, uh, I weigh 200 pounds in this example, therefore, round one, I'm going to row 200 watts. Now, that is in real-time watts, not average watts. So we're not watching the average as we do the workout. We'll visit it at the end. So 200 watts. I then get 10 seconds off. Here's the deal. During that 10 seconds off, I want you to be rowing just nice and easy, light. Don't stop rowing. I want you to just be kind of cruising, take the pressure off, breathe, but keep your body moving. Next round, 20 seconds on. You're going to add 20% of this. Okay. Now, for those of you that are not good at math, 10% is simply taking this decimal place and moving it over one. That means that 10% of my body weight is 20. So 20% is 40, so I will row 240 watts for round two. Okay, now we know that 20% is 40, therefore I'm just going to add now 40 watts each round through round five. Okay, so 240, 280, 320, 360. That takes me through round five, but it's a six round workout. Well, in round six, you are going to go at a full sprint for 20 seconds, meaning I want you to just go bananas in this final 20 seconds because we need an absolute max effort reading from you in this final sprint. Deal? Okay, you and I are making this agreement right now that you are going to give me a full sprint. And when I say that, I mean that in the 10 seconds of rest between round five and round six, I want you to start sprinting with about three seconds left. Don't start sprinting when the 20 seconds starts because that's not a true 20 second sprint. That is a five second build 
with a 15 second sprint. I want 20 seconds of sprinting out of you. Um, and I mentioned that you're going to be doing this whole thing five times through. Well, that's because each time you do it, you are going to hold a specific damper setting. Four, eight, two, six, and 10 in that order. So round one, you are going to set your damper to a four and then do everything that we just said. Six rounds of 20 on, 10 off, all the way through following these prescriptions, okay? And you will have programmed it as intervals time in your workout, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest. Once you get done with the six rounds, I want you to give yourself six minutes of rest. That is right, two to one rest on this. You're gonna work for three minutes, I want you to rest for six. The reason I want you to rest for six is to try and mitigate fatigue as best as possible for this workout. I know it makes this a little bit longer, but that's okay, we're going for results here, okay? I'm not trying to just crush your world. Now, as this increases, I would say by about round three, you'll start to feel like you're working. Round four and five, yeah, you're gonna be tired, but round six is where you really empty the tanks. Then give yourself six minutes of rest. Okay, we're going to do that five times through. Again, round, the second time we do it, your damper setting will be at an eight, the third time a two, the fourth time a six, and the final at a 10. So, that is the workout. Now, this part is important to record, but where you're actually going to learn something from this workout is in the memory, the back end of this thing. So after you're done, you're gonna to go to your memory function. Now, if you have a PM5, that is on the front end, it's in your main menu. The memory button will be right there. If you're a PM3 or PM4, you're gonna to have to go to more options and then find your memory. But from there, uh, also PM5, you'll have to hit list by date to get into the actual results. All right, now once you are in the memory function, what you are going to see is five rows of six by 20, it's gonna say 20 and then 10 R, that 10 second rest is what that R represents. So each of those is responsible for your four, eight, two, six, and 10, and it's going in descending order. So the top line is going to be what was your four, then it's going to be your eight, your two, your six, and your 10. Now, I want you to create a spreadsheet here of your own that is laid out just like this. So again, keeping in mind, the first or the top line you see is gonna be the four, then we go eight, two, six, 10. All right, so you've got that recorded. Now what you're gonna do is hit the magnifying glass on the first line. So you've got this first line, you're gonna hit the magnifying glass. That's gonna pull up all the results, these results from your four, okay? Inside of there, what I want you to do is look at your column of watts. By the way, make sure that before you do this, you're, you are looking at watts as you do this workout. Obviously, you've had to have because that's your unit of measure. In the memory, just make sure that uh, watts is showing up. If it isn't, hit units and that will change it to watts. Un watts will be in there. You're going to then look down the column and you're going to find what should be the sixth row, or the sixth row down, should have the highest wattage of all six lines above it, you will then take that wattage and record it in these relative boxes. So from my first set, my four, let's just say that on my sixth round, I hit 420 watts, okay? I'll record that. Again, the highest wattage number that you see inside of this four in the memory, you will get this list. You're then gonna find your watt column and number six, the sixth line down, should be the highest wattage of that entire single piece. I'm gonna take that number and I'm gonna plan it into my spreadsheet. Next, I'm going to go, I'm gonna back out and I'm gonna to go to the next line down and hit the magnifying glass again. So then we'll repeat that for each of the five sets, four, eight, two, six, and 10. So let's just say we go 440, uh, 500, 150, and 300, okay? Just made those numbers up, but <clears throat> here's the deal. What I am then looking at is a very clear picture of which damper setting allowed me to achieve the highest wattage. And I've written it out right here. So if I look at this very clearly, my third round of a damper setting two allowed me to, when I open the throttle, achieve a wattage of 500. That 
far beats any of the other rounds. So what am I going to do with that knowledge? Well, I am now going to take my machine and I'm going to set my damper setting back to a two and I am going to go into my main menu again, go to more options and display drag factor. Now I'm going to just row at my damper setting of two and it is going to give me a drag factor on the other end and that is going to be my starting place for understanding where I work most effectively with the machine. Now again, human error can be involved in fatigue or perhaps you just approached a different one differently. This is a learning workout meant for you to experience different drag factors but also to give you some results on the back end for you to work with as you're learning about drag factor and what's optimal for you. All right. Guys, go do this workout this week. It is a good one, but it does take a little bit of setup. That's okay. It is an excellent workout to learn from. All right, guys, as always, make sure you go sign up for our newsletter, The Hustler's Guide to Rowing, where you will get our latest blog article and video in your inbox every Tuesday morning. Also, go to our website where you will be able to find all of our programs and coaching for whatever you are looking to do on the rowing machine. Guys, as always, we will see you on the other side.